All right, class, welcome to our lesson for today. It's going to be from 9.1, and we call it the Introduction to Volume. Okay. Oops, let's get a better line there. The introduction to Volume. So we're going to go through our handout again, and we'll explain all of the things that are listed there. First of all, we want to connect to background knowledge to kind of find patterns and look for and make use of structure, our two practices that we do with mathematics. And so volume, when you learn about volume, you want to go back to the roots of area and then go back further than that to length. And so that's where we start. So I ask the question, what is length? Okay. As we go through these series of questions, you can feel free to pause the video, refresh your memory, and then you can play it again. So what is length? Well, length is the measurement or extent of a one-dimensional object from end to end. The measurement of a one-dimensional object from end to end. Okay. Two. Now next we're going to talk about how we measure the length of this segment. Okay. So we have a random segment here. The length is measured by counting the number of unit segments in the segment in, in the whole segment I was just going to say the number of unit segments okay so the unit segments could be like these ones right here so I'm marking off parts of the line, okay? And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine segments. Okay. Number three. Number three talks about the measurement pro principles. Just as a refresher. There are three. First is we want to choose our unit. Second, you want to start from the beginning. And end at the end. Third, we want no gaps or overlaps. Okay, so those are the three measurement processes. That is length. We're going to now move it to the next video of area. Okay, now we're going to go to area, which is number four in our handout. We're going to talk about what is area. Area is, uh, we have this from our test, so it's pretty recent. Area is the amount of space in a two-dimensional object. However much it's, it, it takes up. So we're going to find the area of a rectangle now. The area 
favorite rectangle is number five. So how do we measure the area of this object here? Okay, so again, we want to fill up the rectangle with square units as we choose our unit. following the measurement principles. To find the total area, we count the number of squares. And we can use multiplication. To help us. Okay, so I'm going to draw in these squares here. Oops, a little bit too low. Take a distance there. Okay. And so what I have here is I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so there's 20 in here. Sorry about all the other crazy things. 20 in the unit squares. And we can say that it's our length and our width. One, two, three, four, five. This is our length. One, two, three, five. And our width is one, two, three, four. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and we have know all about length and volume. We'll move on to, um, in the next video, we'll move on to, um, we already know about length and area. We'll move on. Okay, moving on to volume. So this is part B, volume. Yay, we're happy with volume. Okay, so number six. Just like we asked before, what length is and what area is, what is volume? I encourage you now to look it up in your phone or a dictionary or something that gives you the definition of something. And pause the video and then when you come back, see how it matches up with what we've discussed in classes before. Okay, volume. is the amount of space within a 3D within a, a 3D object okay so it's just like area but 3D so how much space is in there now, in normal classes, we're, we would take a volume, we do a volume activity. Okay. The volume activity would have us take empty boxes and put little cubes in them. Okay. So when we measure the volume, we need to find their unit, to choose our unit. And the unit for volume is little cubes. So, but part A, we're going to fill a container with cubes and we're going to find the volume of it. Okay, so this is part A and B. Okay, so we have our container here. I'm going to draw a box. Rectangular solid. It's too high there. Okay, 
and we're going to fill it with little cubes. So I'm going to draw the inside a little bit here with dots. Okay, and we're going to fill it with little cubes. So let's put one in here in the corner. Okay, and we'll start laying them down in here along this edge and along this edge. We'll start laying little cubes in here. You can start seeing these cubes form up here. Okay, and we're going to start building them up this way as well. Okay, and we can start extending these lines out here. We could start extending these lines out here if we wanted. Start building up our cubes. A little bit long. A little bit high. There we go. And we can start extending them this way too. So we have a whole box full of them. Okay. And if we extend our lines, there's a representation of fulfilling this box with cubes. Okay. Now we might lose what our dimensions were originally. They're right here. So I'll highlight them in. These are the original dimensions of our box. Fill it up with cubes. You can see them all here. That's how you find the volume of something. So you just fill it up with little cubes, little unit cubes. Okay. Now, how are we going to find out how many there are in here? Well, with area, we multiply length times width. We use multiplication to help us. Okay. So we're going to do in part C. You can find the volume of the where the total of all the cubes is the volume so you can find all you can find the total of all the number of cubes by using multiplication by counting or by using multiplication so i want to um, emphasize that you can count if you wanted. Okay, or by multiplication. Now, in our figure, we have a length and a width and a height. Okay. And the number that are in the Length is a, right here, this is the length of the edge. And when you do that, you count the little cubes that are on this length here. The width is this edge right here. You're counting the little cubes that way. And then the height is this one right here. That These little lengths right there. Okay. So length times width. Oops, that's actually the answer to the next one. So let's go ahead and put that letter down. Part D. I. Length. Okay. 
times width times height. Okay, that's the first way. So volume is equal to length times width times height, or L times W times H. Now notice that we multiply L times W first in this formula. Okay, notice, and this is L here and W here. And if we multiply them first, then that means we're actually finding the area of this base. Okay, because that's what the length times width is a rectangle. Okay. So for part two, we have the volume is equal to the area of the base times height. Okay, so that's another way to find the volume. Find the area of the base and times it by the height. We'll use that later on. Okay, for this video, we're going to continue on with our handout. Number eight. What else can you find the volume of? Okay. We can find the volume of a lot of things. Boxes. Um, prisms. Um, pyramids, uh, cylinders, cones, and composite figures. Composite meaning things that are put together, like a pyramid on top of a box, so, or any 3D shape. Number nine talks about standard units to measure volume and standard units like as in inches cubed, okay, or centimeters cubed. We can measure things with little cube inches, little cube centimeters. Uh, we can also measure things with volumes of liquids. So for example, a liter and a gallon are also volume measurements. Next, we move on to part C, where we talk about just a briefly about volume with U.S. customary unit, volume with U.S. customary, system. Okay. Now, the in in the handout we talk about that one gallon equals four quarts. Four quart, one quart is equal to one, two pints. One pint is equal to two, um, two cups. One cup is equal to uh, eight fluid ounces. One fluid ounce is equal to two tablespoons. And one tablespoon is equal to three teaspoons. And in the US customary system, they do um, half of a teaspoon and, and a fourth and so on. So that's how they get the littler ones. So it's pretty nice, right? Uh, not so much to remember here. But uh, we do have to teach this to our students, and so here are a couple of helps. Number 11. This one's called the Gallon Man. Okay, so I have a little bit bigger picture here. Oh, no, don't do this. Okay, sorry about that. Gallon Man. Oops. So I draw a gallon jug. This is a big jug. It's a gallon. Okay. So, oh, it's jumping down again. Sorry about that. Okay, and so we're going to do, let me erase this one. Make room for the gallon man. All right, so it looks like it won't stay still here. Let's see if we can get it to stay still. Gallon man, we have a smiley gallon man. Okay, the gallon man will have, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video and start a new one. All right, so we're doing trying to do the gallon man for number 11. Okay, so we have a big gallon. 
show his head first. The smiley guy. Big guy in here. Okay. That's my gallon. And every gallon has four quarts in it, so four appendages from the gallon man. Quart. One quart. And two big quart legs. Okay, so he's got that. Now every quart has two pints coming off of it, so these are kind of like starting his fingers. One pint, two pints. Same thing with this side. Every pint quart has a pint, two pints. And every pint has two cups in it, so those are like little fingers. There's our gallon man. Looks like he's waving hi to us. So number 12, another way to look at this is called the Kingdom of Gallon. Okay. Kingdom of Gallon. So for the Kingdom of Gallon, we're gonna draw a big G here. Okay, big G for the Kingdom of Gallon. Now in the Kingdom of Gallon, we have four queens. Okay, and so they're like this big. Queen, 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 queen. And in the four queens, we have two princes. So the gallon is the big one. The four queens are the courts. Okay. Q for queen and court. And inside the queen, we have two princes. Okay. So every queen has two princes in this one. So those are like the pints, two pints. Okay, and inside the princes, they have two cups. So I forgot what they were, but you can think of some in court jester or something like that. Or count, I think they're counts. Every prince has two counts to help him. Okay, and that's the kingdom of Galen. Okay, here is our last video. So number 13 from our handout. This is a lot like the... Where, uh, homework problems that you'll be doing. So what we have is um, a figure that starts out like this. Okay. Almost like a Utah, and then it just keeps going back this way, though. And so the dimensions that we have is that this whole thing right here is three inches. This whole thing here is four inches. This whole thing here is seven inches. And we have a two inch top here. And a one inch side here. So that means that um, we're going to find the volume of this thing. So there's two ways that, that typically happen with the volume. So way one is we're going to split into two. So this is a composite figure. Split the composite figure. 
into two parts. And we can just draw a dashed line right here. And we have the volume of the first one, volume of top, I'll call it, is a length times width times height. The top has a length of two inches, so that's this part right here, two inches here. The width is going to be, say, um, this one right here, seven inches, and then the height will be one inch. Okay, so two inches. Oops, let's go back here. Two inches times, let's use the, this one, okay, width is going to be uh, seven inches, and height is gonna be one inch. Okay, so two times seven times one is 14 inches cubed. Now the volume of the bottom is also equal to a length times a width times a height. Okay, the bottom length will be four inches, the width will be seven inches, and the height, well, the whole thing is three inches, but this one is one inch, so I need to label this one as two inches, okay? This is the whole height, this is the part that's not from the bottom, and so it's the three inches minus the one inch, give me two inches. So we're going to do four inches, times seven inches, times two inches, okay? And when we do that, we get um, 28 times two, which is 56 inches cubed. And when we add them together, the volume is equal to 14 inches cubed plus 56 inches cubed, which gives me 70 inches cubed. Oops. Okay. So way two is the area base times height way. Area base times height. So we need the area of the base first. Now the area of the base is this figure here. So I'm going to pretend that the base is going to be, uh, let's see, I'll we'll line it in red. This is the area of the base right here because I need the, the height to be uniform from the bottom to the top. And that's only going to happen if this, I make that the base. If I make the bottom the base right here, that as it's oriented, the four times seven, it's not uniform from the bottom to the top this way, okay? It will be if I orient it this way. And have that to be the bottom. See, it's all the same shape. All the cross sections are the same, so we can use multiplication to help us. So the area of the base, I'm gonna divide the area of the base into two parts, just like I did here, okay? And the, I have a four by two rectangle. Oops. Okay, four by two here, and then a two by one here. Okay. So the area of the base is um, equal to a four by two plus a two by one. So we have uh, eight units, or inches, mm. inches squared plus two inches squared, which will give me 10 inches squared. And when I multiply the height, so area base times height, I'm going to get 10 inches squared times seven inches, because that's my height here, okay, height, which is equal to 70 inches cubed, okay. So I found, I was able to find the answer in two ways, so those are the typical ways. So I hope this video helps, and hopefully you have a good day. All right, class, for this video, we're going to do the volume of a rock, a shape that is not like a nice shape, like a rectangular solid. Um, and so the, we attribute this method of finding the volume of a rock or an irregular shape to Archimedes. And we have the Archimedes principle right here that we're going to talk about. 
And I recommend that you watch this video on YouTube here about the Archimedes Principle. It describes what it is. And then after you do that, um, you can pause this video. And then after you do that, you can press play again. Okay. So now that you've watched this video on YouTube, um, essentially the Archimedes Principle is that we can find the volume of an object that is irregular in shape by immersing it into a tank of water or a bath of water. And the amount of water that rises is the amount of the volume of the object. So it's called volume by displacement. Okay. And so investigate this example, we're going to find the volume of a rock and we're going to put it in a tank. And so the tank is 45 centimeters by 65 centimeters by 30 centimeters. Currently in the tank, it has 10 centimeters of water. Okay. So about right here, I'm going to draw in our water line. Okay. This much is 10 centimeters. When we put in the rock, so we're going to draw in our rock. So we'll do a nice um, brown rock. Okay, draw in a rock right here. Okay, that's a rock. And we're going to, that rose made the water level rise to. Uh, 15 centimeters. Okay, so just a little bit more. I'm going to draw the water, new water level in green. Okay. The new water level is 15 centimeters. And so that rock has some sort of displacement. Okay. And we're going to find the volume of that using this principle. Okay. So in order to do that, we're going to um, find the volume of the water. So according to the Archimedes principle, we find the volume of the water and rock together. And we subtract off the volume of the water And that will equal the volume of the rock. Okay. So first we're going to find the volume of the water and rock together. Or you can find the volume of the water and then go ahead and, and subtract it off. What we have is um, a way one right here. There's a couple ways that we're going to do this. So way one is we're going to find the volume of the water and rock together. Okay, so that's equal to um, 45 centimeters times 65 centimeters times 15 centimeters. Okay, and so we find that's all of the water there that is in green. So we're going to find all of that together. And using our calculator, we have 45 times 65 times 15. When all that's done, we get a volume of 43,875 centimeters cubed. Okay. So the volume of the water, just the water, is equal to um, 45 times 65 times 10. Okay, length times width times height. Okay, 29, and we get, when we multiply those together, we get 29,250 centimeters cubed. Okay, so we subtract off the 43,875, and the volume of the rock, is going to be equal to 14,625 centimeters cubed. Okay, so that's the first way. And I'm going to box that in green so we can see that. The next way, way number two, 
is that we want to find just the volume of the rock, right? So notice that the difference in heights is just five centimeters. Okay. So if we find the volume of the length and the width and this height of the rock, just the rock displacement, we will be able to calculate the volume of the rock. So volume of displacement only is equal to 45 centimeters times 65 centimeters times 5 centimeters. Okay, and when I multiply all that together in my calculator, I also get 14,625 centimeters cubed. Okay. And so that's just the displacement there. Okay, so two ways of finding the volume of any regular object.